Hello and welcome to Community College News, where MBCC journalism students bring you stories that affect New Brunswickers. I'm Jeff Stairs. In today's show, we look at an insect causing havoc for Christmas tree growers. And later, do you trust your car dealer more or your local garage? But first, Canadians tossed over 25 million tons of waste in 2008, and food products make up a huge portion of that. Michael McDonald has more on saving our scraps. Food spoils, and we don't often eat everything we cook. But are Canadians letting more go to waste than is necessary? Well, uh, I've worked in a couple of restaurants in my younger years, and I've seen a lot of waste that way. Uh, as far as uh, our spot, I mean, in the grocery business, we have a... You know, there's a lot here too as far as uh, mostly in your fresh departments. That's where, that's where most of the waste is. Bradbury has experience as a wholesaler and is now a store owner. He says waste is unavoidable. Some of it can be recycled, obviously. I mean, you can use some things, but a lot of things you can't. You know, tomatoes get soft and old, I mean, things like that. That's just, that gets thrown out. That's just, uh, just the nature of the business, unfortunately. Canadians at home trash almost 9 million pounds of garbage a year. Well, they say that uh, about 30% of the food that's produced in North America eventually is wasted. Antler says infrastructure and participation in organic recycling is much lower than it should be. When you look at the 40% of the materials that otherwise are destined for landfill could be composted, at least a third of that is food residuals. And I'm, I'm deliberately choosing the word residuals versus waste because that can note that it's not of any value. Antler says they're working towards a partnership with farmers outside Toronto to compost food waste from the city. Bradbury said he'd be interested in a program like that but is unaware of any in the area. In Woodstock, Michael McDonald, Community College News. Christmas may be eight months away but tree growers are making sure their stands are ready. As Jill Constantine reports, an insect is causing trouble for some maritime Christmas tree growers. Every year, 350 Christmas tree growers in New Brunswick produce about 500,000 trees. Many trees don't make it to market because of a tiny fly called balsam gall midge. It's just an insect that um, it lives part of its life cycle in the needle of, of the balsam fir tree. And the reason we care about it is because it makes the tree ugly. Um, it's kind of like a pimple on the needle. Drew Carlton is part of a research team studying gall midge. They are trying to find better ways to control the fly. The first step in control is to develop better monitoring techniques using pheromones. When the densities are very high, which I've seen in, in, in several stands, um, what happens is the needles fall off prematurely, usually within a season or two at most. Bill Coleman has been growing Christmas trees for 35 years and is letting Carlton monitor his trees for the gall midge. Four to five thousand trees that have been that have been infected. Well back here in the wild stand I probably only cut uh, 20 trees. Last year where normally I would cut about 300. Coleman's trees were hit heavily by gall midge in 1989. Since then, he has lost many trees. Coleman hopes that by taking part in the study, future growers will have a better understanding of gall midge. In Windsor Settlement, New Brunswick, Jill Constantine, Community College News. The Provincial Forest Fire Center is on high alert. Forest fire season officially started on April 2nd, but crews were putting out grass and forest fires well before that. Brad Perry has more. A warm spell early this spring caused snow on the ground to melt earlier than normal. The grass also dried out quicker, increasing the risk of grass and forest fires. We're picking them up uh, probably between Woodstock and South all the way down to St. Stephen. There were no grass or forest fires reported by the end of March last year, but this year crews have already put out more than 50. You know, a lot of times the grass will advance into the woods, but then it's in the forest fire, then that's we notify the DNR and they have to come on scene. Unless the weather cooperates, Betts says the number of fires will remain high. If we keep getting rain every third day, fourth day, um, that usually keeps the fires down. But if not, you know, we get a couple of three days of sunshine, we can have, uh, have some uh, pretty good fire activity. In many areas, the ground is covered in dry leaves, the perfect fuel for a grass fire. They have contributed to more than 110 hectares of land being burned. 
there are things you can do to help protect your property from fire, such as cleaning up dry leaves and grass. Having green grass surrounding your property can also be helpful. Grass fires will burn up to a green lawn and then stop. So it's not a concern unless, you know, you have dead grass right up to the side of your house, long grass. Fires have already been restricted in southern New Brunswick this year because of dry conditions. Your local natural resources office can tell you when burning is restricted. In Woodstock, Brad Perry, Community College News. Coming soon on jschoolmbcc.ca, our special documentary series continues. On Tuesday, April 17th, Bucking the Trend, Woodstock's Rural Success, a documentary showing how one rural community has prevented population decline. Experts like Susan Makem say people are not leaving rural New Brunswick like we imagine. Some places like Woodstock are bucking the trend. But the key really is that the rural population is not declining at the rate that we might expect given what's been going on in the last five years in this province. Well I think the important thing for people to realize is that Woodstock is actually bucking the current population decline in rural areas. People spend a lot of time with their mechanic this time of year, but do people trust their local garage more than their dealership? Michael Trusiak has the story. When it comes to having their vehicles fixed, people are split between dealers and garages. I get some done at Wright's SO. Uh, a garage. Uh, why is that? They don't have the Saturn dealerships anymore. I would have more trust in the dealership whom I've dealt with, uh, you know, for a number of years. And uh, it depends on how long I've had the car, I guess. But, um, yeah, I think it would be a trust factor with whom I bought the car. The Rosier Automotive Consultants showed that almost two out of five consumers who are very happy with dealer service still go to a garage for maintenance. Um, I think that uh, in a lot of ways the dealer, dealerships have a, a lot of people brainwashed saying that you know you need to bring your car back to us otherwise the, the warranty won't, won't be valid or uh, we're the only ones that can do the service on it. Jeff Wright is one garage owner who's had a loyal following for decades. You know over the years uh, has it changed a little bit? Yeah I mean we've had a loyal customer base for the last 60 years actually we're celebrating our 60th year in business this year as Wright Sesso and my grandfather, my, gra gra my grandfather, my father both had a very loyal customer base. De Rosier also showed that just under half of the people who are satisfied with the shape their car is in take it to the dealer. The rest go to garages. In Woodstock, Mike Shruziak, Community College News. Cab drivers in large centers are not strangers to violence, but in smaller areas like Woodstock, taxi drivers and their passengers feel relatively safe. Jillian Trainer has more. Driving a cab, there is a certain expectation of safety. However, on occasion, there are times where safety goes out the window. One guy would not get out until I shook his hand. And when I went to do that, he put his other hand over it and tried to break my thumb. Taxi drivers work with the public at night in high crime areas and with cash. For these reasons, they are at high risk for violence on the job. In larger cities, taxi drivers are 20 times more likely to become a victim of violence and are five times more likely to be murdered on the job than on-duty police officers. Police Chief Dana Cullicutt says Woodstock police are rarely called about violence toward taxi drivers. I guess the calls that we would receive more frequently would be um, fares that uh, jump out of the taxis and, and take off without, uh, without paying. Although violence is rare in smaller towns, it does happen. A taxi driver in Jacksonville had a knife and gun pulled on him one morning as he was picking up a customer. Mike Haynes says since that incident last year, his company created safety precautions, including the use of a password should something serious happen. Most of my staff's been around for a while. We communicate pretty good, and hopefully it won't happen, but if it does come up, we'll be organized for it. There are many safety tips for taxi drivers. These include having shields between drivers and passengers, or cameras, arranging a code with dispatch, and carrying as little cash as possible. In Woodstock, Jillian Trainer, Community College News. Coming soon to our J School website, a multimedia documentary about the challenges faced by the town of Juniper. We arrived after the mill closed, yeah. so we weren't we weren't familiar with Juniper when it was busy. So the Irving Mill closed since then. Journalists are not perfect, and over the last few months of Community College News, we've saved a few of our lighter moments. We hope you enjoy. Ready? Okay. The government has issued.
Government has issues. Is my hair okay? A report by True. Sp a <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Police, the fire department, and the fire marshal are still investing. The simple luxury of walking into a library or bookstore and taking a book off the shelf. <laughs> Production manager Matthew White says he hopes to one day be able to hire to blah, blah, blah. He says. You want to stop? Hey, man. Hey. <laughs> Boucher explained that Quebec all. Uh, 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 little. Anybody who buys this is going to need a. tracking device, because they're going to lose it in a, my mind. Uh, I want to punch something. We sh Stop it, dog! Sit. 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 Stay. Let's just do one go for fun. You can do this, guy. Other farmers feel that selling a product under the name Organic, Organic. In Woodstock, Mike Trusiak, Community College News. Oh! Oh no, the battery's dying. That's our show for today. To see more of our work, visit us at jschoolmbcc.ca. Thanks for watching.